boy, DJ, DJ Pac-Man. Uh, I got top eight today, playing a bit of a power deck. Uh, branded Adventure Gradle, uh, featuring DPE. It's a lot of engines, but it puts in a lot of work. You got two cameras, fool. Hey, man, I try, I try. <laughs> He's an eyeball already. <laughs> like, uh, I'm just gonna hop right into the profile. Uh, playing the smallest Gradle engine ever, I play three Eagle. For those of you who don't know what it does, it uh, essentially, if it's destroyed by a battle or monster effect, I can target one of my opponent's uh, monsters, uh, equip to it, and uh, take control of it. This combo is pretty well with DPE. I can, uh, even if this is set, I can DPE pop, pop one of their cards. I'll pop Eagle, Eagle effect will take something else, and then I'll just start using that to play or interrupt them. So it just provides a free interruption. Uh, then I play the freest engine, almost every deck plays it, uh, three fin rear, uh, pretty simplistic, handles. Uh, for hand traps, I play three Ash uh, and three Droll. I also played three Imperm, but it was it was really weird. Today, I was super happy about this. I wish this was a matching rarity, but Ash came in clutch. A lot of times, sometimes I would normal summon the Ash with the Fenrir to make Barone, or I would even normal summon the Ash and use that in my Mirror and Jade to make Psychic End Punisher, which was catching people off guard a lot. It was just super utility, you know, just a lot of like uh, toolbox options. So I was really happy to have it. Uh, for the bricks, there's so many bricks in this deck. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, I played two Fallen of Albaz. Never want to see it, but I also play Super Poly, so you know it gets the job done. You have to play it. Uh, I play the bricks for the DPE package, one and one. A lot of people ask why I didn't play the Plasma because sometimes I throw out a lot of bodies. It's easier to make a Plasma, but the adva uh, the uh, advantage you get off of having the Dasher comes up a lot. And it being the level five or higher, sometimes I have a card in my extra deck that I'm gonna show later that it comes up for a lot. Uh, I play the one Elich, the Golden Lord. Uh, I would dump this with Branded Fusion. This is my light target. So when I make Albion, I dump Fallen of Albaz and this. And then I can usually send one of the spell cards for the Brave package that I play, like the Equip spell, and get a free 3,500 beater that can't be uh, uh, destroyed by card effects. So it's super clutch. Then for the Brave package, I play main deck Illegal Knight. It's my dark target. I play the Griffin Rider for the Negate, and I play three Enchantress. I saw her so much today, I kind of wish I didn't see her as much, especially in top eight. But overall, the Adventure package did uh, its job, served me pretty well. Uh, that's it for the monsters. Uh, moving into the, the spells. So I play the One Foolish. This serves a double utility, like I said. I can dump the uh, Eldritch to the Golden Lord, sometimes just for the free body. I can dump the uh, <laughs> a Water Enchantress and start getting access to my Adventure package. Uh, overall, just a, a good card. I usually side it out going into two and three because I don't want to see too much of the adventure package, but I wouldn't change much about it. Uh, best card in the format, in my opinion. Answers a lot of boards. Uh, can't respond to it. I play a lot of targets, so you know you just don't want to lose really to these crazy board states with Fire Kings, with Vanadium, or Locals, you know, pretty different, so I was happy I had it. Uh, then for the flex, I play uh, three Fusion Destiny. I saw it a lot today. Uh, people were mad, but <laughs> I was super happy to see it. I also played three, Red Infusion. Seeing both of these in your hand feels so good. You get Ash on one of them, and you really just don't care. You activate Red Infusion, they ask you, you're like, sure. And then you activate Fusion Destiny, and your opponent just gets really upset. So. Uh, for consistency, obviously, we play the three, uh, Prosperity. And then for the Brave Package, we have to play the two rights, uh, one Fateful and the Adventure. Uh, nothing really that different, just standard stuff for the package. Going into the traps, I play the turn skip uh, and game winner uh, skill drain. I really wish I had these ulti. Uh, <laughs> I saw this a lot today, off, either off prosperity or hard drawing it. Uh, I can play a lot under it, so most people aren't prepared to try and like keep up the advantage. Even Fire Kings popping their cards and trying to gain advantage. This was really good to have. It checks a lot of boards, especially going first or sometimes even second. I can put up on the gate. And then when I try and flip this and they try to interact with it, I will usually have my uh, Wander Griffin Rider to negate or uh, DPE to start trying to force out interaction before. And considering the Gradle effect works even while Skill Drain is on board, it's a graveyard effect and DPE will float, as well as Mirror Jade uh, giving me the pluses of destroying my opponent's monster is super plus. And then obviously the last card was the three uh, Imperms. Uh, that's it. It's pretty thick. It's going over to 42 cards. Um, but... Honestly, the only thing I would probably change is I would probably change the uh, the dark target, the illegal knight, and I would probably put in either dragoon or a light hex seal so I can make a uh, uh, red eyes dark dragoon and just check my opponents a little bit harder. Uh, moving into the uh, extra deck, I played two synchros actually. Uh, I played the Barone and the uh, Psychic and Punisher. Usually with um, 
Fenrir and Ash or Fenrir and Bell, I would use that to make a, a Barone. And that's pretty common. Most people have already been doing that. But what was catching people off guard a lot was the Ash and the Bell with one of my level eight fusions and using that to make Psychic and Punisher. Having a way to push for game or just having a way to summon a 3500 beater, sometimes that people don't really have a main deck out to is really crazy. And even on the skill chain, most decks don't have a hard way to make something 35. So sometimes having this and uh, uh, Elder Golden Lord coming back from the graveyard is 35. You just have uh, towers that people have to answer. Uh, moving on from my synchros, I also have links. I play the BLS and the um, Dark Charmer. Usually with the uh, Fusion Destiny, you get locked. That's the last summon you can do. And with Brand of Fusion, you get locked into fusions. I didn't want to divert too much of my extra deck into non-fusions, but having the utility, especially in this game, taking my opponent's SP or uh, checking different cards in the graveyard, this just comes up way too much for me not to play it. And BLS is super impactful. Making this, sometimes I made this and then swung, killed something, made it for like gain 15, so it's 45, can be targeted or destroyed by card effects. And a lot of times, you know, the decks really struggle to get over this. So Fire King didn't have really a, a good answer for this. So I was happy I played it. Uh, for my two poly targets, I play a Draco Equest because I play a lot of Manetium in my locals. Uh, Draco Stapelia, pretty solid. Uh, Mud Dragon and Guru. These are obviously super common, enough said. Uh, I don't play Starving. Honestly, because I feel like these two cover the matchups that you would have wanted to. And this is for the scarier matchups that I face, which is Manadium. Going second against that board feels pretty impressive. I also play, of course, the one of DPE for the DPE package. Uh, for the branded cards, I played a lot. I played the Abolinatus. I would dump this off of Mirror Jade and I would search my Fusion Destiny. And a lot of people were thinking I was going to search another branded Fusion or something else. But having a hard way in, a, in deck to get to the other part of your engines was really good. And I thought, since I've also played against Dragon Link, this comes up. It's also a Contact Fuse, um, which also people are really unaware about. Um, but it felt honestly really good to have today. Uh, I also played the two Albion, one to make and obviously one to dump. The one Rebellion and Double Mirror Jade. Uh, that's it for the extra deck. Uh, the only thing I probably would change, I would probably swap out um, either the uh, Dragus Lapelia for a Typhon or even the Barone. The Barone came up once, but realistically speaking, I feel the Sanctity of Punisher comes up a lot more often. Uh, into my side, I was scared about Fire Kings, but I thought my deck honestly had a solid enough matchup, making things that were uh, had great, had floating effects and were hard to out. So, but I wanted to cover my bases even with Labyrinth and uh, other graveyard focused things. So I played three Bell, I played uh, three D Barrier. Just overall coverage, I wanted to skip people's turns. If your deck loses to this, then I wanted to have the answer for it. Uh, I lose super hard to anti spell, obviously. So I haven't played uh, two Cosmic One Harpies. Hindsight being 2020, I cited in uh, these three a lot. Uh, going first and second but this should have been a third cosmic like i said i got anti spell game three and i saw this and if this had been the third cosmic i would have uh, won that game so it's unfortunate uh i also play uh three evenly uh realistically speaking a lot of boards are pretty weird the only matchup i didn't like this in was against fire king and beyond that i just i really wanted to have this especially going second into boards you bait out the negates because you have a lot of strong one for ones like branded fusion and fusion destiny that your opponent must answer so having this to just uh equalize the game state was pretty good and then more uh graveyard hate i played 3d d curl uh before i was thinking about it from last night i was thinking about playing bestials but i was expecting to see like a lot of fire king even some centurion so i wanted stuff that was a little bit less light and dark reliant and more flexible so that's about it and that's it uh, for the profile, guys. Uh, appreciate you guys having me. Congratulations. Uh, see you on the channel. <laughs> Shout out to what? <laughs> Shout out to the boys, Ocean Gang, uh, my boy Danny Miles, everybody we see in video. Congratulations. Appreciate you guys. All right.